Okay, so in our last video, we created a simple project which showed the basics of Echo. I showed you how to create a red ball that collided with two rectangles that are rotated. And as you can see, this is how the project worked. Now, if you didn't watch the last video, I highly recommend you go and watch it to see how this was made because this video continues on from that video. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is go into our code and there's an image called red underscore circle underscore spots. And we are gonna use that image here. The purpose of this image is to show you the fact that Echo doesn't resolve rotations. So even though the ball is moving down the rectangles, it's not actually rotating. It's a trick, a sort of illusion of your mind to make it think that it's rotating, but it's not. And you can use this effect in your games if you are using Echo to simulate the fact that a ball is rotating by not having any textures or spots on, on the ball, just having it simple and solid will give that effect. Let's talk about our next project. What we're going to do is create a small puzzle game where this rectangle here is the player and it's gonna move up this slope, so this blue slope to come to here. Once it collides with this red rectangle, it's going to move this rectangle down and the player can actually push this red rectangle here across the scene, making it fall down as well, giving it a way to cross over to the other side and go to this green rectangle to complete the level. You will also notice there are some black rectangles down here. These are going to be our boundaries and this will make sense once the game is being built. We have three boundaries, so one here, one here, which is really small, and one here. They will all end up being about a one pixel width or height based on where they are. But like I said, this will make more sense once the game is being built. Let's go into our code and make a new level. We'll of course call it level two. And we're going to have a simple boilerplate in place. Okay, so this is very similar to level one. I'm not going to explain what this is doing, but what we do have to do is change the resolution of our size, which I should have done in the last video. So let's make this 1920 by 1080, and we'll change this to level two. So this should give us a white screen in our game. Okay, now let's add our elements. Because I've made this project before, I'm going to reuse the code from my previous attempt, but I'll explain what the code is doing. So these are all the components that are going to be in the level. I think we're just missing one boundary, but let me explain what this is doing. So this is our slopes platform, which is this one over here. And because of the unique shape of this platform, I have loaded up an image as a sprite and we use the load graphic method to put that in the level. Since the other elements are simple rectangles, I'm using the make graphic method. So this is the floating box, which is up here. This is the floating box trigger, which is this over here. This is the end goal, which is down here. And these are some floor boundaries, this one and that one. There are also some color variables, so color red, color orange, and color green. These variables have not yet been defined, as well as the player one. So let's go and do that now. These are all the colors in our level. And I'm using the FLXG color type to assign them. They're simply hexadecimal figures, which I retrieved from Figma. These six figures here are placed in the last six figures over here. I've noticed this code is missing the pushable box, which is the box that will be over here. So the player will push this down here. So let me go ahead and add that code now. And finally, we need to get the sloped platform PNG because that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna do that now. If you want to get all the code for this tutorial, I'll have a link to this repository in the description where the final code will be. For now, let's grab the image and we'll add it to our game. Now the slopes platform is here for us to use. If we run our game, all the objects should be in place. I've just noticed I'm missing this final platform over here for the player to climb on, so let me do that now. And now we have all the assets for our game. Let's initialize Echo and add some player movement. As usual, we'll have the width be FLXG width and the height FLXG height with a gravity Y of 981. 
If you don't know what any of these values mean, I highly recommend you watch the previous video, which I'll link in the description. But basically we've just added echo to our level, which has given it some gravity. Because we're gonna focus on the player, let's only add a physics body to the player. Now we want to add movement to the player by pressing keyboard buttons. Usually in Flixel, we'd move the sprite velocity, but because we're using echo, we want to move the player's physics body's velocity to make the player move. We're going to create a new function called player movement. We're going to get the physics body of our player and that physics body's velocity is going to change based on the keyboard input of the user. Let's explain this code. First, we get the player's physics body. Let me change that to an equals from a minus. And by default, the velocity of that physics body is set to zero, so the player will not move. If the user presses the left key on the keyboard or the right key, it will move the velocity, spelling mistake, it will move the velocity x by 200 or negative 200 based on if the right key is pressed or not. Now, if you did the last video, you'd remember that adding a physics body to a sprite immediately gives it gravitational rules it has to obey. So if you run the game as is, the player is going to fall through the level. If you focus on the bottom left of the screen, the player just falls down before the user has a chance to interact. To fix that problem, we're going to add two boundaries to our game, one on the left and one on the bottom. Now, we have already added the boundaries, we just need to add physics bodies to them. Here are the boundaries, floor boundary and left boundary. Now let's add physics bodies. We'll do the same here as well. And now the player needs to listen to these boundaries. Now with this in place, the player stays where they are. If you move the keyboard left and right keys, you'll notice the player does not move. And that's because we need to add the player movement function to the update function of our state. To do that, we're going to override the state update function. Then we're going to add our player movement function. So now I'm pressing left and right key on our keyboard. We'll move the player. But if we move too far to the right, the player will fall down through the level. Our next focus is to add a polygonal collision to this sloped platform. 